real quick about modularization. Now I've written something up here, MVC. Have any of you guys come across this term before, or this acronym? Yeah. Do you remember what acronym we were using when, when we were in Python? It was actually models, templates, and views, right? Uh, so the T templates was actually the E part, our views, and then the C, the controllers, was V in that case. Yeah. Okay. All right, so now we're, we're entering this paradigm of MVC. So we have our models. And let's talk about what the models are. Ryan, what are the models? Um, your models are going to be <clears throat> what holds... Um, everything in your database, basically the structure of your database. Okay. It gives you access to your object. Okay. Yeah, so in this case, it's basically going to be our code that interfaces with the database, right? Okay. And gives some structure to it. Perfect. Views. Anthony, what are our views? How we're going to display it to mm -hmm. the client. Okay. Yeah, great. So these, in, <clears throat> in terms of our current full stack projects, these are just going to be our templates, our EJS templates as they are right now. Right. Controllers, lands. What are those? <clears throat> so that's kind of like the logic between the views and the models and how everything's kind of handled. Yeah, that's that's actually a very good way of describing. So the controllers are sort of acting as a traffic director, right? We're taking in this request and then we're deciding what are we going to do? Let's go get something from our database potentially using the models, and then let's go render a template, right? Cool. Can you explain models one more time? Sure. So the models are the code that are actually going to interface with our database. And they're going to give some structure in this case, as we saw, when we create that schema, we can set up exactly how, how we want each document to look. Okay. Requirements and so forth. All right, so the purpose of today is to kind of break down the code that we were working on yesterday. So let me pull up my mongoose demo. Well, it's quite large. Maybe that's a little too big. Okay, so the issue here is that we've been working in this server.js file, and we have a lot of code in there. Right? Now, currently that's not really <clears throat> too big of an issue because... We only have, I don't know, how many routes do we have? Two? Okay, so we've got one model, maybe, in, I guess in this case we've got three routes. What else do we have? Anything else interesting? It's a fairly small bare bones application, so we're not running into too much problem in that this file itself is only 56 lines. So it's not like we have a 500 to 1,000 line behemoth where there's all kinds of stuff going on or whatever. But we want to kind of get into a, a more of a best practice where we modularize things and break them out into their own spaces. Okay, So let's take a look in the platform. They've given us kind of a template for how we can modularize things. And keep in mind that Express is quite flexible and you can modularize in some different ways. So this is one take on how you might want to organize your code. But for the, for the rest of the time, let's just stick to this particular way of doing it. That way you guys can kind of get in the, in the good habit of modularizing, all right? So we're going to have these different folders here. We're going to have a client folder. Inside that folder will be a static folder if we need it. And then we'll also have a views folder, which will just be our templates, right? Okay. And then, Node modules, which is always there, so no change there. And then we're going to have this server folder that has a couple, a few different subfolders in it. So we'll have a config folder that's inside that. We'll have a controllers folder and also a models folder. Okay? So this is kind of the template that we're going to use as we start to break this app out into different pieces. So let's go into our editor here and create some of these folders. So we need to create a client folder, right? And then let's also create our server folder. 
Now again, inside that server folder, I'm going to have some different subfolders. So we'll have a config subfolder, a controllers folder, and then finally a models folder. And then inside the client, again, we were going to have a views folder, and then static, which we weren't really using for this particular project. But if we were, that's, this is where we would put our static files. All right, fair enough. So inside, note here in our template, inside our config folder, of the server, we're going to have a couple files. We're going to have a mongoose file and a routes.js file. So let's start creating those guys. So inside my config, create routes.js, and then I'll also create oops, mongoose.js. And let's actually start bringing some code in there. So naturally, if I'm if I'm dealing with mongoose here, which which pieces of this do you think I might start moving? Maybe our connection we can move into the mongoose file, right? And then also potentially some of this stuff, the schema. Now we're gonna we're gonna keep moving this stuff around. We'll start juggling it a little bit, and this might get a little bit confusing. So I have to apologize ahead of time for that. So all of the required stuff is kind of staying on the server. You're just going to move everything. Yeah, you could you could say that. Basically, we're, when we move things out of server.js, we then need to require it from where it is, from wherever we move it to, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Good call. So let me just grab this code here, our mongoose.connect. Whoa. Can't seem to select it all of a sudden. And then we'll go all the way down to this part here where we registered the model. I'm going to save this real quick. I'm going to run the project. And the reason why I'm going to run it is so that if we start breaking things, at least that way we'll see, you know, hey, something went wrong. And we may want to kind of check it as we go to just to make sure the page is still rendering and so forth. All right, so inside my mongoose.js file, I'm going to paste this code that I have currently. And let me um, make sure you guys can see this. If I require this file right now as is, is this going to work? So if I require this file from my server.js, OK, no, why not? Possibly. However, um, first and foremost, look at line three. What's going to happen there? That's not going to oh, there. So what's wrong with line three then? Or, or why would line three fail and break? Because it's not on the server page, so it won't, it won't be able to connect to the database. It's like, it's like a variable in. Yeah, which con good. All right, we're on the right track. Which constant? Okay, yeah. So so here inside this file, I have not yet required mongoose, right? So obviously we're going to get some kind of a reference error here. Mongoose doesn't this variable does not even exist in this file. Okay. All right. Yeah, so it's kind of more fundamental there. So let's require it. Mongoose mongoose Are we using Express anywhere in here? No, so yeah, we don't need to do anything with that. You just kind of like import mongoose.js into the server.js. Correct. Correct. Yeah, that's exactly what we're going to do. So right now, if I require this particular file, notice that we're not, we're not actually exporting anything from the file. Okay, And we'll talk about exports a little bit later on, but for now, this file is not currently exporting anything. All it means is that if I require it, it's simply going to run the code in it. Okay, That's all it's going to do. All right, so let's come back to our server.js. 
and we want to require this file, right? So let's just say require. And now we have to get the path right to the file to the file that we're trying to require. So if I say dot slash, does anyone know what that means? The current directory. Okay. And then I want to go inside the server folder. And then inside that, I also want to go inside that config folder because that's where I've put that mongoose.js file, right? So we'll go config and then mongoose. Now notice one thing here. You might be asking yourself, why does that not say mongoose.js? So Node is automatically going to re uh, resolve JS files for us. We don't have to explicitly say mongoose.js. Okay. All right, so now if I save this, and let me uncomment that real quick. Let's make sure that nothing broke, right? Okay, so server restarted. And if I go back to my app here, localhost 4500, okay? Everything's still working, so good. Yes, question? If you still put in .js after mongoose, would, would it still work? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're good there. However, this mongoose file that we created is now a little bit large, right? So now I've got my schema, and actually it's not that large, but, but here's the thing. Did I need to save a reference to this dojo model anymore? Am I using it in this particular file? No. So that's why yesterday we were talking about how I could how I could do this in two steps. I can create the model, and then later on I could get a reference to it. And it seemed like, well, why don't you just you know <laughs> do them both in one step? Well, this is why because we're going to end up doing it in two files. Okay. So I'm just going to take this off because I don't need a reference to that anymore. Now, where do we think this code? may need to go, the, the dojo schema, and the model that we created. So we created a new folder down here, right? A models folder. Probably belongs more in there, right? Does that make sense? <laughs> All right. It would make sense if the models material goes in the models folder. Yes, it would, wouldn't it? All right, so I'm just taking this slow so we don't kind of <laughs> get lost in the shuffle. So let's create an actual model file, and we'll just call this dojo. Okay, and what I'm going to want to do is grab most of this code here. Oops, can't seem to select it though. I'm going to grab most of this code here, cut it out, and then drop this into our Dojo model. Okay. Another issue here on line three, same one as last time, right? What do we need to do first? I heard it somewhere. Shout it out. Acquire! <laughs> I thought it was a trick question at first, Yon, I was like, wait a minute. Oh, really? <laughs> Tricky stuff, huh? Mongoose. Okay. So we've got that in there. Now, the place that I'm actually going to require this file from is going to be that mongoose file that we were just working in. So inside my mongoose.js file, that's where I'll reach out and require all of my models. Okay. So let's go back to this mongoose.js. And the code that we just cut out can now be replaced by simply requiring that model file that we just created, right? So I can say require. And then what is the pathing to that file. So notice that right now we're inside mongoose.js, which is inside config. I need to go up one level into my models folder and then to the dojo, right? Dot, dot, dot. 
So this time we would go dot dot, and then we'll go models slash dojo. Okay, let's open up the terminal. Save that, we restart it, and let's just reload the page again. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Tom's land? <laughs> All right. Well, I'm glad we're having fun this Thursday. <laughs> this is great. Tom's land has a lot of people doing it daily. Does it? Was it like a thousand? It was a thousand, right? <laughs> Something like that. All right. Yeah, Tom's land has been pretty busy. <laughs> All right, do we have any questions so far before I, I move on with the modularization? Yeah. The, the Mongoose JS, JS page, it was pretty small as it is. And do we really have to keep split, splitting it up? Or can we just say we do a, a project and that's not going to be any longer than 25 lines? Can we just leave it like that? Or? This is just to get into, into best practices. It doesn't mean that you know when, I, when I'm looking at your tests and stuff, I'm not going to make sure that you had modularization going, just so you know. It's just that if you don't, you may find yourself a little bit lost in your code. Okay. okay. So it's really for you. All right. I would say especially so when you're on a large project that has you know, multiple, like a big website, you know, think about how many if Facebook was done on this platform, how many files you'd have, and it'd be almost, I'm not going to say impossible, but it'd be really, really tough to keep up with it over yeah, exactly. So let's think about if we, if we were writing some app like Facebook, you know, potentially how many different routes we might have, how many different models we might have, right? All those different things. And also, when you guys get to Java, you'll see that things are quite modularized. They're they're split up quite a bit. Okay. okay. So so once you get used to it here, it probably won't be as traumatizing. Okay. <laughs> that right. was that was definitely a learning curve. Was it? yeah, I bet. <laughs> I bet. Okay. So I, I am going to show you guys one other thing, um, and this is not critical. I just want to point out, if this is confusing, I don't want you guys to worry about it. But what if I just wanted to require all of my models all in one shot? Let's say I knew that I was going to be creating some more models kind of later on down the road, and I didn't want to have to keep you know, adding each one as a separate require statement. Could I do that? Yes, I could. So here's how we would do it. I could use the FS module, which we've seen before. FS, FS. And then I'm just going to comment this out for now. So what I would do is I would create a models path variable, just saying, where is the folder that I'm holding all of my models? So say models path equals. And then we'll start with dir name because that's the current directory that we're in, right? And then to that, I'm going to append one level up and then into my models folder, right? OK. So now that I've got this path, what I can do is I can then read that directory and see what files do I have inside of it. So I can say fs.readdir.sync. And then I need to pass the path to that, so models path. And what that's going to give me back is just a reference to a bunch of files inside of an array. Okay. So what I can do at that point is I can then iterate through all of those files, or all those um, actual file names, and then require them all individually. Okay. So I'm going to say for each which will allow me to iterate through all of these files in the array. And then I'm going to provide this function here, which takes in a file. Let me close this out real quick. The function is going to take in a file, and then I'm just going to require that file. Okay. So let's say require. I'll start with the model's path. And then I'm going to add on a forward slash and the file name. Actually, let me change this variable here. Shoot. File name. Okay. 
because it's going to give us back this array of file names. So I'm just going to append that file name here and require it like that. Okay. So notice that I've commented this out. And now we're kind of doing this a different way. We're just requiring all the files that are inside my models directory. OK, and we've got a restart here. Test it out, make sure it's working. Lance is sorry. <laughs> this is good stuff. I'm having fun. Huh? <laughs> I'm having fun. I don't know about you guys. We're, yeah, oh yeah, I got the delete button, right? Done! <laughs> Temporarily, I'm, I'm sure it'll be back though, right? <laughs> okay, cool. So let's go back. Um, any questions before we move on? There's no like asterisk. You know, like import asterisk liquidatus in Django. But we, we imported the, the models. Oh, I see what you're saying. No. <laughs> no. I, I do want to stress though again that this is not this is not something that you guys number one necessarily need to understand or number two even necessarily need to use because most of the assignments you're going to do are simply just going to have one model anyway so you can just require that model by itself and you'll be good. Okay. Just wanted to show you that in case you end up making a larger project maybe for project week or whatever you could do it this way. You can go ahead and require everything you need. All right, great. So now we've got inside this config folder also a routes file, which we haven't touched yet. So what do you guys think we're going to put in there? A bunch of routes, right? OK, so let's go back to our server and let's see where our routes are. Can you guys see where they are? right here. So starting on line 14, that's where we start doing our route logic, right? So let me grab all of this all the way down to here. Cut those guys. And notice how the size of our server file has come way down already. So down to 16 lines. Nice and lean. Going to be pretty cool. Alright, so let's go inside this routes file here. That server file, like, um, you explained this to me yesterday, I keep getting confused. And uh, it's, um, the, it's like app, it, it's, um, the way that's normally set up, const goes first, all the uses go second, and the sets are all below that. Is that uh, yeah, generally that's true. All of our requires are typically going to be towards the top. And then after that, our app.use, which means that we're applying some kind of middleware to the requests. That would come after after we create the app because we have to have the app before we can say app.use, right? Okay. All right, cool. So I've moved some of this stuff into the routes. There's another thing that I'm probably going to need to move inside the routes too, which is line six, because on six that's where I'm I'm grabbing a reference to that model, right? Yeah. So yeah, let me, let me grab that real quick and we'll put this in routes as well. For now. We're still gonna. We're still kind of migrating some things piece by piece. Okay. So right now, if I require this file, would this present any issues? Would we get any errors right out the gate? Yeah. It's it's always kind of that same problem, right? We don't we don't have mongoose here. Mongoose. All right, and then what's the other issue here? I've got this app, but I don't have a reference to that inside this file, right? So that's kind of problematic. Can anyone guess how we're going to handle this? <laughs> this is going to be kind of tricky. What's that? Yeah, exactly. So we're instead of just requiring this file, kind of how we were doing in the other cases, we're going to export something from it. Okay? 
Now you might be wondering what are we going to export from this file? And what we're going to export will actually be a function. Okay? So inside inside these these modules that we're creating, we can export whatever we want. So I can export a string, I can export an object, I can export a number, doesn't matter. It would all work just fine. In this case, what I want to do is I want to export a function. So we haven't seen this yet. This will be new to you guys. Module.exports. Okay. And what that means is that whatever I set this equal to is what is going to be returned when I require that file. Okay, so as I said, what I wanted to export was a function. And what this function is going to take in is going to be that app so that we will have reference to it. Okay? I'm going to take in an app. Oops. And then inside of this function, what I'm going to do is I'm going to then apply all of these routes to that app. Okay, so let's move these guys up inside this function. Okay, can you guys see now how I will have reference to app? Because it's being supplied by the function when this function gets called. Okay, this is kind of a key component. Does anybody have any questions about this part? Not at all? Or is there just confusion here? Yeah, we can use an error function. Do you guys have any preference on this? Yeah, they're pretty cool, right? Let's do it. All right. So again, now we're exporting a function here, which is going to take in an application. And then we're going to apply these routes to that application that we just took in. All right, excellent. So let me save that file. And back here in the server, what I'm going to do is, number one, I need to require the file. So let's do that. So we'll say require server config routes. And then again, when I require this, what is this going to return me? We just talked about that. It's going to return me the function that we just exported. All right. So if, if this is returning me a function, can I call that function now? So this might look a little weird to some of you, but I can invoke that function right away because it's being returned right here. And what do I need to pass to that function? The app itself. Good. Okay, now let me save that, check our terminal here. Uh oh. You can remove the app declaration. Yes, I didn't, you're right. Okay, so again, we have a problem here because notice how app is only being declared right there, right? So look at how I'm trying to use app right here, but it's actually being created here on line seven. Okay, so what if I bring that up, though? In fact, what if I bring all of this stuff up? <clears throat> Let me just clear out some of this. Okay, go back to the terminal. We restarted successfully, so that's good. Let's do this again. So the app is still working. Everything's still okay, right? Now let's look back at our routes routes file. Now this file seems kind of large, right? Now it's got a lot of stuff in it. Does this have just routes in it or does it have more than that? In terms of our MVC. Yeah, we also have the controllers inside here, right? So these, these functions, so for instance, when I want to get all the dojos, this is a controller type of function, right? And also the same thing here. So when I'm creating a dojo, that's a controller function. And then down here, when I'm deleting one, same thing. 
Okay. So we want to actually move that into our controllers file that we're going to create. So we don't have that yet, right? So let's go inside of our controllers folder and just create a Dojo's controller. JS. Okay. And I want to bring in some of these functions. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to rip out the first one of them. Okay. Yeah, grab it. All right. Now inside my Dojo's controller, First, I'm going to decide what am I going to be exporting from this file. Does anybody have a, a guess what I might export? This is not an easy question. You're right. So we're going to say module.exports, and we're going to set that to an object. Inside this object, I'm just going to have some different functions, which will be my control functions. So the first one, and I've got that written as an arrow function, so what I would need to do is I would need to say, let's say I want to call this just my index controller, because that's all I'm doing. I'm just going and getting all of my dojos. So I'm setting this key here of index, and then the value of that is going to be that function that we already had written, right? Let's go back to our routes file again and grab the next one. So I will again grab that function body. And then you'll have to make sure that you put commas in between these. I, I make these, this mistake quite often. So if you just came down here and pasted that in, what's the problem here? It's not separated. Yeah, we need our key value pairs to be separated by commas here. Okay. So I've got to put a comma in here. And then I'm going to name this particular function create, because that's what we're doing, right? We're creating a dojo. So I'll say create, and then set it equal to that. OK, and then finally, we've got this delete function. So let me grab the body or the whole definition for that. Go back here. Again, I need to make sure to put a comma in. And then we'll say this is the delete function. OK. Quick question here. What are we exporting from, from this file? What would no? I mean, what are we exporting from the Dojo's controller? Yes, it does. <laughs> yeah, kind of handy, right? Except for you, Vim users. <laughs> Had to throw that in there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, little help for Tom. What are we exporting here? Uh, it's, it's object or uh, functions as objects instead of uh, dictionary. Well, it's basically a, a dictionary of functions. Okay. Yeah. So in JavaScript, we don't call them dictionaries; we call them objects. objects. So we are exporting an object that has these different key value pairs. So the key for index aligns with this function right here, right? Same thing with create and delete. OK, excellent. So the key value for index is a callback function? Or no? no, well, it will be a callback function. Yeah, actually, that's correct. Because when we apply it in our routes file, it'll be like when a person hits that route, now we run this callback function, right? So we're almost there. Look at this, though. Do I have reference to Dojo inside this file? <laughs> Not currently, right? So where am I going to get that from? Cloud. 
Now, obviously, we're going to have to require something. I'm glad you guys are thinking that. What am I requiring specifically so that I can get a reference back to the dojo model? The database. The mongoose. Ooh, I heard mongoose. Okay, let's require mongoose because remember, mongoose has that function, the model function, and if we just supply the name of the model that we're looking for, it'll give us back the model that we want. All right, great. So let's require that. Oops, darn it. Okay, mongoose, mongoose. Now I can I can create this variable, dojo, constant variable, equals mongoose.model. And then when I only provide one argument to it, it's just giving me back a reference to that model. It's not creating the model or registering it with mongoose. Okay. So now this file looks pretty good. I don't think we have any, any variables that are not defined inside here, right? Should be okay. Have we required it yet, though, this, this dojo's controller file? Not yet, right? So inside of our routes, we haven't yet required it, and we're not applying those callbacks just yet. Okay, so let's do that. So let's come up here. Do we need Dojo anymore inside this file? No. Do we even need Mongoose? Because we needed Mongoose to get Dojo. So if I don't need Dojo, then I also don't need Mongoose, right? OK. But what I need to require, though, is that controller that we just built. OK, so I can say something like, Oops, Rick. We'll call it Dojo's controller, or we can see we can even say Dojo's CTL for short if we want. And then where are we going to get that from? So if we look at our directory here, we have to go one level up, and then we have to go into our controllers and then to Dojo's, right? So I've got to go up one level, into controllers, and then into Dojo's to get that file. All right, excellent. So how can I how can I put these callbacks in here? How do I reference them? Remember what was what was the dojo's controller exporting? An object. An object. Excellent. So how do I get a specific value out of that object? You guys remember? Yeah, we can use dot notation. We could also use bracket notation, but why do that, right? <laughs> All right, so dot notation, what am I going to type in here, you think, Anthony? What was the name of the object? So this is going to be for our index route. Okay. So the name of the object now is this. This is what we're calling it. Oh, okay. We're setting that to the result of what we required. The Dojo's controller. Okay, so Dojo's CTL. Dot. And the name of the index of the key that we want to use. Which was what? Index. Index. Nice. Perfect. All right. And then we could do the exact same thing for these other callbacks, right? OK, great. So Ryan, what am I going to put here in line six? Oh, I'm not sure. A little help for Ryan. Michael. Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. All right, line eight. What am I going to do there, Jessica? Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, I've saved that now. Let's go to our terminal, make sure everything we started without error, so we're still okay, right? Let's go back here, refresh this guy. Let's create a new location. So Seattle, once again, I think they're pretty big. So we can still create that. We can still delete. Everything's good. Is there anything else we need to do for modularizing here? 
we didn't we didn't move our views. <laughs> so that's kind of the one thing. This is like more of an afterthought because we did all the heavy lifting now. Let's just move our views into that client folder and then basically we'll be there. No, it's if you notice here, it was down here. Okay. So I'll just del I'll delete this folder here. Move that to trash, and then we'll just move it up inside this client folder. Okay. Now let's check and make sure that the path is still correct here. It's not, right? We have kind of an issue because we just moved the folder, but, but it's still pointing to a folder that's in the root of our project. All right, so let's fix that then. So yeah, we've got our Dunder Dur name, and then we're going to go inside our client folder, and then inside views, right? So still working there. Everything's good. I believe we covered all the modularization, right? Only thing that we didn't really do is put anything in that static file. Okay. Do you guys want to like touch on that or look at how we would do that? So yeah, what kinds of what kinds of static files might yeah, might we have? I mean, CSS and things like that. But is, it, is there any kind of different? Because like I know in some of them you have to have like a uh, you have to have a folder that connects like your static file, then it's another folder that connects to like your CSS and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. Now this is pretty flexible how how you want to structure it. But let's say we want to just create some subdirectories under there. Maybe we'll have a CSS directory and then a JavaScript directory, or whatever. So yeah, I could just put in uh, inside here my style.css. Okay. I'm just going to select the body and we'll do background of goldenrod in honor of Connor, the hacker. <laughs> All right, so, so how, do, how do we connect this static folder here? Does anybody remember? What's that? Yeah, using middleware, exactly. So let's say app.use. And then here we'll say express.static. Oops. We'll invoke that function, and then we need to tell it what is the path to the static folder, right? So let's do dunder dur name. And then we're trying to go inside the client folder and then inside static, right? Any questions any questions about this? Line four? Static and then CSS. No, the reason I'm not I'm not doing the forward slash CSS is because inside my template. I'm going to say forward slash CSS and then forward slash the name of the file. Okay. I have a question. Yeah. If you didn't use the dir name, can you do the dot slash client instead? No, I, I believe express.pat, uh, express.static is going to require a full path to where, where we are currently. Yesterday I had a CSS file. Trying to make a, I was trying to use it to, for the class schema. And it was giving me an error message and it was saying it was using a CSS file and interacting with um, making a class, and I was missing that forward slash client. I wasn't sure where that oh, okay. in the HTML. So if you miss that forward slash, you'll get a message about your CSS file. Yep. And, and also, I noticed one other thing here in our server.js. Do we need Mongoose anymore here? No. No, because we were actually requiring it from this file that we required on line 10, right? So let me just cut that out. That's gone. And then if I, if I want to link this particular style sheet that we just made, um, what I want to do is go to that template. Where'd it go? Inside my views. Okay, let's just link it up. So link rel style sheet, and then I'm gonna say forward slash CSS and then style.css. 
Goldenrod in the mix. That's nice. It's oh so golden. That is nice yeah. <laughs> Pretty lovely. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it is kind of. In honor of Connor. In honor of Connor. That, had, <laughs> that has a ring to it. <laughs> original mustard. All right, real quick. Let's take a quick guided tour through this code. I'll have you guys talk about some of these things. But So on line one, we're creating this constant variable express, setting that equal to requiring express, right? Line two, creating a constant app variable, setting that equal to the invocation of express. Line three, Tom, what's going on there? On line three? Yeah. So let's get a little bit more technical here, right? We're calling the app.use function. And then inside that, we're passing it the invocation of express static, express.static. So when we call express.static, we have to pass the complete path to where our static directory is, right? Okay. And we've done that using Dunder Duran. Line four, Ryan. Um, you're using the function app.use. Um, We're invoking it, right? We're calling it. it. Using probably looking at those terminologies. And um, it's just saying uh, the extended uh, true is just saying it's using um, it's using Express like your own code. So it's just it's okay. allowing you to use the other um, not the right tree, but the other. It's linking the two together. So what's this going to give us access to when we actually call when we call Express.url encoded? And say app.use the result of that, what's that going to give us access to? Uh, we're probably in server. Yeah, we're in server. So you, I remember you had an issue with this, I want to say later on yesterday in the afternoon or whatever. That's kind of why I'm bringing it up here. Trying to remember what I did. <clears throat> so sometimes you guys may be trying to create an object and using rec.body, and lo and behold, oh, I can't create an object. What happened? What's usually the issue? We don't have this line. Yeah, but I'm, I, 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. Usually the issue is that we have not included this line, which means that rec.body is what? This is undefined. To the body. Undefined. Yeah. So so without this, we can't even read the form data. Okay. This is a crucial piece. And also, by the same token, what would happen if I moved this down here below these other requires? Yeah, the order would be all messed up, which means that when my routes are evaluated, I don't have access to the request body at that point, which means that, again, I'm going to have a, a, a problem. What is URL encoded? Like, what is that? What's behind the hood, under the hood? So URL encoded, again, is just enabling us to read the form data. Because yeah. without this, we wouldn't be able to see it. The request right. object wouldn't have the body. I was just uh, wondering what was behind the naming convention on URL. Like, URL and does that have any significance? So sure, it does. Take the um, URL and put not sure I could tell you. What it is. <laughs> <laughs> huh? That's the algorithm this morning was well encoded. I was going to make a bad joke. But. Yeah, so the, the way the URL encoded works or actually looks typically is you'll see there will be a key and it'll be equal to some value. Yeah. And then they're all separated by the ampersand sign, Just right? So it'd be like key one equals val one, ampersand sign, key okay. two equals val two. That's how. Okay. Yeah, that I was works. just I was confused because usually on um, ex extended, you have to you know also name it and whatever. So like if you were extending the HTML or the EJS file, um, you'd also have to put something in the EJS file that says that connects them as well. I was just wondering how it knew that just by app dot use express how it knew just to what file to look in, like what file it was extending. That's why I was kind of confused. Like it doesn't say, you know, EJS file. So that's that's how the, I was just wondering how the function. So that. so this is just an options argument. Right. Right. So we're so we're running this function, the URL encoded function, and then we're providing it some options. Okay. Now I don't want you guys to worry about the extended true thing because that's not something that's gonna create any kind of an issue for you. All right. Let's keep moving. Next line six, Lance. So you are invoking a function that 
action at that set, and inside you are saying the view engine is going to use EJS. Correct. Very good. Oh, yeah, sure. I grabbed my big set and then I locked. No problem. Of course. Sorry, guys. Right. And ladies. Okay. I'll just bring them right back to you. Okay, Thank cool. You so much. <clears throat> All right, next. Where were we? Line seven. Long. Okay. So we're just invoking this function, right? And we're telling it, I want the views to be in this specific folder. All right, good. Excellent. Next, line nine, Brian. Um, we're requiring the models file. Good. Which is what our model. So if we're really following this around, right, when I do that, now I need to go look inside my mongoose file, right, and see what's that doing. If I look inside there, a whole yep. bunch of stuff going on, right? All right, let's have someone kind of take us through this real quick. Connor, go ahead and take us through mongoose.js. Um, so we're going to require mongoose. We're going to require the file system module. Good. And then go connect to your database Good. to mongoose. Mm -hmm. And pass the options stuff that doesn't show the deprecation. Right, so this gets rid of those deprecation warnings. And then um, just say a class variable to the pass name of the models. Good. Cycle through each file in your models and require. Well, first we have to read that directory, right? Yes. Okay. And then again, so we're just iterating through all the files that we found in that particular directory, and then we're requiring each one of them individually. Okay, cool. If we go back to our server, Anthony, what's happening on line 10? And we're requiring the routes. Okay. The, the path to the routes. We're requiring that routes file. So if we go back to that real quick, what do we have in there? We have the constant go tools controller. Good. Which is set to require right. controller go tools. Good. What is so we're getting the, the controller storage from somewhere else. Correct. Now, now have to go to the yeah, now we have to go to that, right? This, <laughs> this is kind of like following our data around, right? So if we go here, whew. so let's not get too heavily into this guy here, but let's just say, okay, we've required our, uh, <clears throat> our Dojo's controller, right? And we know that what that's exporting is this object that has these different methods in it, right? Our callback functions. Okay, so if we go back there, now what are we doing? So we're on line three, right? So after we get the objects, then we're the next. So we got export. one object, right? One, one object, okay. And then we're gonna export them again in another object. Mm, what are we exporting here? Uh, oh, a function. A function. So a callback. Good. Is it a callback? No, it's just a function. No, it's not really a callback. Yeah, it's just a function. Exporting a function, and it has add that get. Oh, so those are the routes. So this is where we're actually applying our routes, right? Okay. So we're exporting the routes. All right, so let me ask you something. Did this function get called yet? No. No. All right, where does it get called? It gets invoked in the server. Yeah, back in our server. So after we've required it, then we invoke it against our application, right? All right. So for the parameter app, mm -hmm. this right here. If you took that out, did where is it getting app from? I mean, why does it have to be app as the parameter? Well, here, so inside my, my routes, when I'm exporting this function, right, mm -hmm. I need to take in an application here. Otherwise, I'm not going to have any reference to this variable app, uh, right? Okay. Okay. So, yeah, if you take this out here, then we're going to have a situation. So, so if I rip this out, right, 
what's going to happen now? I'm trying to invoke this with nothing, which means that I'm going to be looking for this app variable when I invoke this function. It's going to say can't can't call get on undefined, right? Gotcha. Because app will actually be undefined. Okay. I have one mm -hmm. question, so I was sure. still kind of stuck on this. That's um, all right. Um, do you? I, I just remember now because I, I looked it up yesterday. I, I, I just if I'm right on this, and I was asking what URL encoded does, like I wasn't mm -hmm. saying like what the function actually contains. I know that's pretty like like high level stuff, but the uh, I was saying like uh, doesn't it? Um, it, it, you it does kind it. of give us a little bit of a definition here, which is sort of nice, right? It's a built-in middleware function in Express. It parses incoming requests with URL encoded payloads. So, so basically, you do it's have access to the HTML body, but what that's doing is basically the way um, Meme works is just it comes back as JSON data. So it's break, it's, it's unencoding that uh, JSON data, so it's actually understandable. No, this is not JSON. At least not yet. We haven't been using JSON because we've just been submitting forms the regular way, right? So instead, they come in as these <clears throat> as those key value pairs, like I was saying. So uh, something yeah. like yeah. key one equals val one, ampersand key Which two equals val two. Um, yeah. Which is much different than most other um, other stacks we've done, right? That's that's why you have that's why you need that. Like you don't have to. Well, yeah. Like when, when we were um, when we were doing it in Python. We had access to it inside request dot host, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's the same kind of thing. All right. This was a lot of work today, and uh, and I'm hoping that it wasn't too confusing. So I tried to take it a little bit extra slow for you guys. Just go piece by piece. Let's have some thumbs on this and see if anybody gets it. Clarifications, Michael, Jessica. What was particularly troubling? He kind of seemed to apply and see how many problems I ran into. Okay. Yeah. So again, my recommendation when you're when you're doing it for the first time, sort of take it piece by piece and don't don't move everything in one shot. Only to find out later, oh, I've got ten or twenty different errors or whatever. Take your time with it. You'll get faster at it as you practice, obviously. Yes. So like in this example, you load a project that already existed into its respective folders. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, we were just migrating some things within that project into into this more modular structure. So if, if we can do an example where we just start doing that. We will. Yeah, the, later on when we uh, demo message board, I will do it that way. I'm assuming it'll be less complicated, right? Because now you don't have to do a lot of remove requires and stuff, right? What if we we'll still have to kind of understand how the whole thing works, but yeah, at least we won't have to put something in one place and then move it. So yeah. Okay. Also, once, that once you do it once, to, to be able to refer back to that other project, and basically, obviously, it's a different project, different terminology, but all this terminology is going to stay the same. You can use all yeah. that. So you can. I mean, I'm not saying just copy and paste through it. I have to understand it, but you can refer back to check yourself, so you're not just like swimming in the dark every time. Okay. Thank you. All right. Absolutely, Jessica. Any questions about? <laughs> you probably won't have time to do that. I would have to. All right. All right. Yeah, I will get this up as soon as I can. I mean, some of you guys have, have asked me, you know, why are these videos not 